Hello everyone, this is 9AMD, Beverly Hills. Welcome to my show, Fusion of Science and Beauty. And as you know, my passion for anti-aging and integrative medicine, there's always new topics. And 2017 is a year where we're going to get more and more knowledgeable in what these fields are all about. Today, I've got a fabulous guest. And uh, as you know, hair loss is a huge subject. In fact, yeah, it, even the statistics are there where we at a younger age, our hair is thinning, we're starting to lose our hair much earlier, and what's the reasons? There are so many reasons as far as from a, a medical perspective, I can tell you perhaps there's hormonal imbalances, there is nutritional factors, there can be, um, you know, a, very, a whole host of factors, but the end result is what can I do about thinning hair? What can I do about hair loss? What can I do to prevent hair loss? So I've got a fabulous guest. She's not a doctor, but she is amazing. A uh, person who has been doing this for addressing this issue for over 15, 20 years. She will tell you herself. Her name is Amy Gibson. Welcome to my Thank show, you. Amy. Lovely. I appreciate I'm, it. I'm so glad to have you on the show. You have your own um, uh, uh, company. Uh, it's called Created Hair. And I want you to tell the audience really the story because I think the story is so phenomenal um, <laughs> that sweet. how you came about, uh, wh why, why did you even start thinking and, and get hair loss um, you know, as a passion? How did this whole thing develop? Okay. Well, it wasn't planned, but a lot of our stuff in life isn't, right? And That's you, absolutely right. I feel right. like you, you take lemons and you, you do as much as you can to turn it into lemonade. Yes. So I was a soap star for 20 years, and at 13 and a half, it was discovered that I had alopecia, which is actually an immune disorder. But now it's actually looked upon and referred to as almost any hair loss. And just right. so... You know, you may not know, or maybe with your research, that you have a wonderful growth formula coming out, which you need to get. Um, there's over 60 million women in the U.S. currently dealing with hair loss, and there's millions of more mil uh, women worldwide. And so I had to figure out ways to, while I was on soaps and on shows for so long, to wow. hide my secret. So you ask, what can you do about it? There's tons of things we're going to talk about what you can do about it. The main thing that I always say, say is, okay, so we're dealing with hair loss. When this happened to you, yeah, okay, um, and it was it, it it happened to you obviously prematurely, right? This is not the time well, you would expect. Well, it did. It did. I was it was discovered at thirteen and a half, but then wow. I took cortisone shots yeah. for seventeen years, which does bring the hair back. They still use them today. Yeah. But it doesn't stop the hair loss. So how did it? How did you feel? How did you? I mean, it was devastating. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. it's a teenager, it was, and at that time, no one even like thought of the word alopecia. Yeah. So the first thing was to find a doctor that could explain it to me. The next thing was there was no Amy Gibson out there to tell me what do I do now, which is why I spend the time I do with Created Hair, yeah. because there's no one walking women through this process, and we really do. So the first thing I had to decide was how do I keep my secret. That was the first thing. How do I not let the press know and not let my castmates know and not let my friends know except very few? Yeah. And even nowadays, there's this shame and guilt that goes on about yeah. with hair loss. Yeah. But I think the stigma isn't as great now as it was. I mean, I work with 95% of my clients. I'm a cancer hair loss specialist. It's with cancer clients, yeah. right? And so, and worldwide. And there's the and there's shame. there's very few, of, 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 believe me, people like her. Amazing. Thank you. But it is, it is a journey because in not having hair, I mean, I rip off my wig all the time with my clients. I go, okay, you're telling me I won't understand. Hold on a second. Bam! I do understand. I'm right here with you. I'm completely bald. I have no hair. And what we try to do is say, okay, we're stuck with this. It's nothing to feel shameful of. Yeah. And especially because wigs now and hair loss, um, it's a very difficult thing for women because it's what we base most of the time from growing Our up sexuality. with Barbie and yeah. VO5 hair commercials, where, you know, seeing that gorgeous hair, yeah. we get to think that that's our identity, right? So, yeah. but Barbie came out with a bald, a bald doll recently, which I thought was interesting. So, you know, it was devastating and then you have to kind of work through it mm -hmm. and it was difficult. But I also got to a point where I had to go through the acceptance and I think that's a big part of it is the grieving part I don't let anybody sit in their stuff for a long period of time. It's like, okay, this is what we're dealing with, and what can we do about it? And it's not only nutritional. I think it has to do with the toxics 
toxins that are in the food and environment and air and water that you're we're absolutely drinking. right you know I think there's so much more that attributes to hair loss than before and especially with cancer patients you know you have to say okay I mean I always say they're my heroes because not only are they dealing with their own mortality and then they have to now decide what they're going to do and to the extent that they're going to do it to stay here for themselves, for their loved ones, to fight this thing. But now they've got to deal with losing the one thing that they knew was their own. And so I always say those women are my heroes, right? So it's devastating for every woman. It really is. And there are wonderful solutions that were not available before either. So I look at hair now. I always I, I say it's alternative hair. Um, it's an extension of ourselves. It's like an accessory now. It's looked upon, you know, like lipstick and heels. It's not looked upon, and I want the women out there to understand that there's nothing. It doesn't shameful. have to be. It doesn't have to be that. It's like, like you said, it's like heels, and that you could right. change. Why shouldn't you be able to change your hair? Right. Why shouldn't you? It's just like another accessory. Well, I mean, extensions. In that's, a way, it's extension, it is. accessory. The extensions. Yeah. Let's look at extensions for a moment. Yeah. You know, extensions have been around for a long time. There are good ones. There are bad ones. Uh, I love using European hair, but nobody feels uncomfortable about extensions. When you talk about extensions now, it's like, oh my God, have you seen my extensions? People don't feel as uncomfortable because they've been out there, right? So the thing that I always say to women, if they're going to be wearing extensions, and my whole thing, I wrote Sex, Wigs, and Whispers. Simply, Fabulous book. This thank you. Sec, sex, Wigs, and Whispers. Love and Life amazing. with Hair Loss. Amazing. So, amazing title. The reason why I did that book was because so many women don't know how to work with their hair and keeping their secrets. So let's talk about extensions for a moment. I used to say before I went public and I would be on a date and I didn't want them to know I was wearing a wig. I would use the fact that I got extensions. So I'd say, oh, you know what? My head is so sore. I have these extensions. But so do me a favor. Like, don't touch my hair. And they'd go, okay. And... <laughs> They'd never go near my hair. I mean, there are things you can learn to get through. People think because they have to wear hair that they're all of a sudden stuck in the shell and they can't go out and they can't date and they can't swim and they can't work out. Wrong. You can absolutely so have a life. Out. Absolutely. I think it's more about when you change your perspective yeah. is where you change your reality about it, right? Yeah. So we have to get rid of the stigma first that the hair is a bad thing. And cancer patients already feel doomed by hit by this this disease that they have no yes. control over yes. well this is one place they have control over I always say tell me something do you like your hair before and they go well it's all right I go so why do we want our right again well, like let's do fab let's do terrific I'm not talking about making you look different than way you were but just a little bit better just a little bit better and there's an art to making you look better yeah. you know and I think with alopecia especially um, you know, alopecia hits 5% of Americans per year, but it's actually gone up since then. And because it's now referred to as hair loss, so thyroid, nutrition, diabetes, so much of it blood pressure right. medicine, mm -hmm. prescriptions, I mean, so many things yeah. that, and stress, I mean, there are more women holding two jobs now than ever before. So you have stress that women have never dealt with to this yeah. extent before. So there's a reason why Absolutely. all this is happening, yeah? But my whole thing is, let's get to the bottom line. Let's get to the, the solution. So let's talk about some solutions right now. Shall we? Yep. Okay. I think, I think uh, So absolutely. the book is one thing. The mm -hmm. book is Sex, Wigs, and Whispers. And basically what this was, this was kind of a behind the scenes of all the secrets that I ever kept. <laughs> and all the lies that I ever told in television. And all the ways you got around. So how soon after you experienced all of this did you decide to write this book? When, when this book you? was a 10-year labor of love. I just kept putting it down. And more stuff would happen in my life. And then I would do it again. <laughs> and I mean, the first man that you know, ever saw me ball was in a date rape. And that's in here. There are things that I really expose. Then there are really hysterical things. Like I was on a bus going across 59th Street. And it was 100 percent humidity yeah. like 110 degrees and all I wanted to see was my reflection for a moment you know was my wig on straight at least and this gorgeous Adonis came on the bus I thought oh my god please come over here please stand right and sure enough he was right over me which was great at the same time the first thing I thought was oh my god is my wig on straight can you see my roots I mean is this and then a handicapped woman wanted to get on the bus and I immediately got up to give her my seat so you know how there's the bar you're holding on to the bus and yeah. he and I were next to me this way and he was with his right hand this way, and we hit a pothole, and his watch caught onto my wig. Oh and, my and it gosh! Was, and, oh my gosh! You know, it was a real lesson in how innate our wigs become, because I was like, oh, hold on a second. Just, and I really felt like he was pulling it off. But I believe in using double stick wig tape to hold your wig on. So it didn't 
he couldn't get it off. I mean, you can't get it off now, right? I jumped out of a plane 13,000 feet for the Today Show to prove that the wig wouldn't come off going 125 miles an hour. So there's a lot of stuff women can do if they're worried about their, the wig flying off. So, so there's funny stories in it, but the best thing is that at the end, there's 20 pages of really great styling tips because women don't know once they get this wig, like what do I do with this thing? How do I wear it? How do I wash it? How do I cut it? How do I make it look really natural? There are yeah. things like baby hair. So, and then I wanted to create something for women to keep their discretion. So I created the rescue bag, R-E-S-Q bag. And the rescue bag, is the first wig bag. It's a wig bag within a wig bag. Ah. So. So you don't see it. This carries your wig, right? And all you have to do, I call it twist, tuck, and go. And this looks, you know what? A lot of the extensions, though, look a lot like this, right? Yeah. A lot so, of the clip-on extensions. If they're if, good. Right? But this one, good? you literally just yeah. fold. Yeah. You put it right in on a crown. You fold it in there. And, and it fits in. nice. And wow. this way, so if you're going to the gym or you're traveling, yeah. and this fits right in the bag. And what's great about this is this carries all the supplies you may ever need, from shampoo to a brush and comb to wig tape to clips to even an emery board to smooth out this, the rough areas of a wig to cleaning your head because I believe, as you believe, in scalp hygiene. Yeah. So, and a sewing Amazing. kit. So everything in here goes like this, zips up. That's amazing. And you can get it at Amazon.com or resqbag.com. And that's the rescue bag. So it's constantly, I'm constantly coming up with either innovative ways to make new wigs. Mm -hmm. And the main thing for me is, are you comfortable? Because it's one thing to be comfortable, and it's another one to feel how, like you how again. Did you, how did you decide that you, like, a lot of celebrities wear wigs. I mean, I, that's something I wasn't aware of until I had a couple now of friends. Now they're talking about it, not then. Yeah, I, until I had some friends, and they confessed to me, right? right. I had, I, especially Bollywood. Um, okay. And I was, uh, when, that's when I first heard about it. And, they said that's the easiest thing when the hair is dirty. That's the first thing they do. They carry <laughs> bad hair, hair day. Yeah, right. <laughs> they probably just need this rescue bag because it wasn't a rescue bag, that's for sure. And and they had a bad hair day, and they're onto a wig, or they've got a sh uh, something uh, event to go to, didn't have time to do their hair. There's a wig, and it looks perfectly natural. Where? Uh, how did that happen? How did your transition happen to where you said, okay, I'm just going to start to I didn't. make? How I did didn't. This, I got yeah. sick. So tell I, me I that. hurt my back, yeah. and I was bedridden for a year with a 50% chance of ever walking again. Oh my gosh. And at this so time, that's I'm, another thing that happened to you. Oh, there's lots of things. I, I wow. go, this has been an interesting journey that I made an wow. agreement to come into too. But wow. what happened was, while I was in bed, by that time I was producing. So the right side of my life was doing all this production. And the left side of was still continuing to go to my hair loss support groups, and for me, for my soul. But when I got ill, the right side of my life, things would keep falling apart. Like I would get a deal with the network and it would fall apart or I'd get money and it would be gone. It was just nonstop. But here, women kept calling me one after another going, God, I haven't seen you. And you know what? I really have this date or I want to make a wig and you make great wigs. Can you show me how to do this? I said, well, I don't make them. I go to a wig maker, but I tell you what, how he does it. And I started, I said, wait a minute, this is really, and I kept asking for a year, why did this happen to me? I was in such pain. What am I supposed to do with my life? And so I started charging $15 a phone call. When I could walk again, which took a little over a year, I started selling wigs out of the trunk of my car. And that grew. I went from... So seven, you're, that's when your idea came. I'm just going to start... Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't... It yeah, just yeah. was... It didn't, I didn't have the idea. Yeah. It sort of was like, oh, well, this is kind of interesting. All these women keep calling me. Yeah. So I started... I would go from cancer center to cancer center or hair loss support groups and doctor's offices by foot. And I would sell my wigs. I'd say, I have these wigs. Do you want to see them? What color do you need? And I'd go and I'd make like $50 profit. And that got so busy, I then started working out of my home. And then that got so busy, I built a studio. Amazing. And I created the first women's swim wig that went worldwide. And it just kind of, you know, and now That's I have the water amazing. wig. And amazing. I just, it just keeps. <laughs> Which is and a now, website? What's your website? The website is createdhair, C R E A T E D hair.com. Okay. They can reach me at 1 877 F O R Wigs. And if you're dealing with cancer, you can also go to cancerconnect.com where I've created the first cancer hair care center ever you on guys, the internet. Did you hear that? We're going to be right back with this after this break. Nina MD Beverly Hills Fusion of Science and Beauty. Stay tuned. Welcome back to my show. This is Nina MD, Beverly Hills. 
fusion of science and beauty. And I've got my fabulous guest, world's expert in hair loss. She's not a doctor, but you know, she's about the best person you can go to for a solution on what to do with your hair loss. We have laser treatments, we have so many things, the hormones that we can balance, but at the end of the day, our hair sometimes may never be really what it ever was. So with that comes a fabulous solution and it's a learning experience for me to find out what she's doing. Created Hair is your company. Thank Welcome you. back to the show. Thank so you. tell me what um, you were, you were telling me about how you finally you know came to doing your own company with the, uh, the wigs. Your first thing I respect you so much for is a cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't have cancer. That, I just no, is a cancer patient that women. you're working with, and what you've developed for them, the website that you've developed for them. I think that is phenomenal because so much of our sexuality is our hair, and when we're going battling cancer, that's like you said, bad in itself that we feel so much, you know, the defeat of our disease that we cannot control, but we can control the way we look with our hair. Right. But there, so, is, there is something about, sorry, there is uh -huh. something about feeling like the woman you were yeah. that helps you get through anything, whether it's cancer or anything else, as long as we can get back to looking in the mirror and going, yeah, that's, that's me, yeah. There's that what we're used to. Mm, yeah. You got your, you, I call it the mojo. You got yeah, your mojo, mojo back, you know. Yeah. And it is. I hate. I think the the word empowerment to me is so overused. But in this particular uh, situation, I think it's very appropriate because we, as women, need to draw from things to be empowered. And when we lose this, how do we replace that? Where do we go? Well, let me for ask that? you something. You when know? you first realize that, okay, my hair is not coming as back as it should, right? You, you had two I lost treatments. It. That's yeah. what I'm saying. When did you start get, when did you get your mojo back? When you oh, first, wow. yeah, how did it took time. you? That's what I'm saying. How did, well, give me your own personal experience. You give, know what? Share with us a little okay. personal story. When I first lost my hair, yeah. um, I freaked out, but there was an immediate solution. So I would, they would fix that bald spot with the cortisone, but then yeah. there would be another small spot. But I had it handled. When they gave me too much, and then I lost all my hair in three weeks, I had a mini nervous breakdown. And then four days went by. I was about to start another show in General Hospital. I needed the money. I needed the gig. And I thought, okay, what do I do? So I decided to turn this character of an undercover detective into one with seven different dialects, which would be a way to use, utilize the wigs. But I had a get with the producer and tell him what really happened. And after I got through meeting him and talking to him and we decided to keep it private and write this new storyline, which was amazing, I then had a feel, I had to deal that with real life. That idea just came to you? Did that idea just yeah. come to you? Well, it was also, you know, when you have wow. to, we get creative when you got to yeah. survive, right? Yeah. And so I then had to figure out, okay, well, I got that handle, but now how do I deal with this in my real life? I had to wear the same wig to and from the studio so no one would know that it was anything different than my hair. I had to get used to people coming up and hugging and not being freaked out that my hair was going to fall off. All these things you had to work through. What about the hairstylist but the, on the, she, on the she set? Signed a, she signed a confidentiality. So wow. there are all these little ways. But the main thing was how do I get through the day? I have to tell you, only eight months ago did I go into Universalis. There's alopecia. Areata, where you have spots. Yes. There's totalis, where you lose yes. your topical. Yes. Then there's universalis, where you lose your eyelashes and your brows. Eyebrow, and even hair. When I was finishing the book, I'd had a fight with a family member that I was so angry that I then, three days later, my husband looked at me and said, where's your lashes and your brows? Like, I had just lost them. I will tell you, I went right back to where I was 13 years old. I went into this trauma, this crazy emotional thing. Was, oh, my God. Because I didn't even realize, I, I didn't realize they were gone. And the first thing I thought was, okay, hold on, I gotta get, I gotta get proactive here. So I ran to Nordstrom's, because they have those brow girls, they have the makeup people. Right. And who goes in Nordstrom's at three o'clock on a Saturday thinking they're gonna get waited on for this without an appointment? <laughs> but before going in, I prayed to my mom, let her rest in peace, I said, okay, mom, I don't have a lot of time, I'm freaking out. Just point me to the right person. Just get me to the right person. And I walked in and nobody was available and I'm looking around and this woman taps me on the shoulder, Kimberly, and she says, hi, can I help you? And I go, well, I'm actually looking for a makeup artist because she wasn't dressed in the, the black right, thing right, like right, the right, Mac people. Right. And I said, well, actually, I'm really just looking for somebody who needs no brows. And she goes, oh, well, here's my card. I'm the Nordstrom's brow specialist. I went, no, <gasps> no, mom. Oh I was like so perfect. And she spent two hours 
because it was different. Bad I do lashes. brows and lashes all the time in my clients, but doing it on myself was really a challenge, you know? So I had to learn, and there were lots of tears and emotions that go through, wait a minute. I say to my husband all the time, I wake up in the morning and I feel like an ugly alien without the thing that frames your face, your brows and your lashes. But then I put my makeup on and I go, transformation! I mean, you try to make a joke, you try to do the best of it, you know? And you get through the day, and I look in the mirror and I go, oh, that's me again. I, I got it. I still go through it. Do you think there are days that I don't go, I'm watching a commercial, or I walk in and see your hair and I go, oh man, I wish I had hair like Nana right now. I mean, it does. And I go, okay, you know what? I gotta be grateful the fact that I can hear or have breasts or I can walk or see that gratitude. whatever. So you gotta go this, back to gratitude. So this is, you know, so this but it's is true. This is, the first I, thing I looked at I, yeah. was your hair and I so said, oh, this is nice. A, so this is, again, um, I think this again makes a very important statement because it's true to my heart. I believe in that anything that you do, um, anything that you become, you have to have gratitude. And so, perfect example, again, manifestation. I've, I've done, I'm an NLP sort of fine. Oh, great. So, it's all about timeline therapy. It's about NLP, manifesting, um, and all of those things uh, that people think are not true, really are true. Those techniques are tried and true, and you are just exemplified that. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. And one other question. With, with the wigs that, um, why, they're so natural. What are they, can you tell what they're, I, I think the audience wants to know, what are, what are the wigs made, made right? out of? What, premium can, uh, European, yeah. premium European hair. This is, look at the wave, look at, this is like, this is amazing. <laughs> I mean, I, so it's sweet. like, why would I not want, want to even so just have You'll one? come in, we'll I'm, talk. I'm already there, I'm already there, okay? Um, so tell me about well, this. Well, the secret, like, I think yeah. the secret to, to wig making really is the density. Women go in and they get all so this hair. So how are you different? Like, so how did you dis like do it differently? By mistake, I think. I think it's so more density. By mistake. Yeah. So you think you made it more dense? Well, everybody's different. Yeah. I like less density. Yeah. There are women that are used to more density. I'll put a little bit more hair in. Yeah. Everything should have a part. Yes. You got to yeah. see the part. There's a workmanship. There's an artistry to making yeah. wigs work. Yeah. And much of it is your symmetry. Women, I think, overcompensate and they yeah. get all this hair yeah. when you don't need all this hair. What you need is just hair, hair that's going to move. And if you have too th much thick thickness yeah, or the density, yeah. it's not going to move like your hair. Yeah. So when people come to createdhair.com or right in Westwood, yes. um, and I, 45% of the women that I do, I never meet because yeah. I will look at them, I'll get their measurements, I'll send them caps and colors, and we literally deal with women all over the country. I deal with a lot of transgenders. You know, the wig is the That's finishing huge. touch. touch. You know, that and what Dana Lee does with the laser, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the finishing touch. You can look and get anything done, but that face. That's got to look like that hair. That's, that's got to look natural, or you're just a dead and, giveaway. And then how do you know, looking at the face, like what kind of hairstyle, or just what? What's because I go by someone's symmetry. And there's an art to a symmetry that, you know, a certain piece is better for a round shape versus a pear shape versus square chin. Um, the length, making somebody not look too long if they have a thin face. You don't go to here straight down. You've got to chop it. You've got to have layers. And I believe layers are very youthful. Bangs are very youthful with a woman. But there are things like lace front, where you have a little bit of lace that's sticking out of the wig, so when you wear your hair back, it looks just like the hair is coming right out of your skull. There are all these wonderful wonderful alternatives now that weren't available before. It's amazing, amazing. Uh, do you know who I think of um, in the wig making? Who? Who do you think? Ra remember Raquel, Raquel Welch? Welch? And um, Johnson. Uh, be oh, uh, be uh, Virginia. Uh, uh, she yes. She's a model. That's the black model. Yeah. Okay, well first of all, she's Raquel is not a designer. Raquel, I love her because she knew about putting her name on a wig line 45 oh, okay. years ago. I think she has some what about say Beverly over colors. What about Beverly Johnson? Did she make the wigs or was I she? I think Beverly does have something to do with it. Yeah. And I think, I think along the years Raquel has had some yeah. input, but she doesn't design and like I do. And those wigs in the, in the days, now with the, probably with everything, they weren't as natural, they, the hair didn't move. Right, now it does. Now, now it now moves. It, does. it, it moves. Does. It's got, the, there's body, there's, you, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and same thing with the extensions. It's, it's, I think that extensions is an idea from the wigs because a lot of them are clip-ons. And with the new ones, you just put something with a band and it's so much of hair. It's almost like a wig. Right. So There's so I, much. That's why I was saying for someone to feel stuck, you're not stuck. 
All you have to do is get proactive. Can That's you it. can you give those websites again? Sure. So you can go to created c r e a t e d hair dot com. Okay. You can call eight seven seven f o r wigs. That's three six seven nine four four seven in the eight seven seven area code. And for, what about women with cancer? That's and so the one you can just... call me. You can. We work with a lot of women with cancer. You can also go to cancerconnect dot com. Because you can find a lot of wonderful information there that doesn't. For any wigs, you can come back to me. But really, for information you may be looking for, they're just fantastic. And in terms of alopecia hair loss, just call me. We'll we'll go over it. I do Skype three is, times a week, three hours a day. This is huge because so a lot of my patients um, have come to me and with with um, alopecia or just. And they're like, what what do I do with this? What do I do? Because right. there's really other than cortisone shots. And sometimes that doesn't. No, there's a lot of stuff out there now. Well, there are for there, them. For them, they, they no, feel. No, there, there's, there's feel actually so there's actually a, a test that's been done with Columbia University that's bringing back hair that was a side effect from rheumatoid arthritis medicine that they're testing that's doing well. I have a client that got most of her hair back on a on another medication. People can call me. I'll I'll I'll, I'll cue them into a little bit about what's going on. We just have to be careful because this is the closest thing to our brain and our bloodstream. So whatever we put on our head, we want to be really careful of in terms of topicals, and I really believe that. Absolutely, you know. Absolutely, I appreciate your you. book. And your book is that I'm going to be reading so this. Sweet this is I'm first. reading this, you guys. You have to get this book. Where the book's available on, on Amazon, Amazon, and you can also go to sexwigsandwhispers.com, or the rescue bag, R E S Q bag. Com. This is amazing. Is it, do you get other colors in this? So I have. There's, are there I like? Is there a like leopard? There's, Oh, there's a leopard one. This is very nice. <laughs> it's leopard and pink. Um, I think, gosh, I want both, but I, I like pink. Yeah, pink well, that's what amazing. I brought for you, so that's yours. Wow, yeah, this yeah. is an amazing. Thank you, you guys. This is uh, this has been an amazing show. So Thank many so women much. with Thank hair you. loss are going to love this thing. I feel so happy you've come on. Look at the wealth of information you guys got. You would have not known about this, and um, this is and read this book, Sex. Uh, uh, sex wigs and whispers. I'm going to be reading it. This has been a fabulous show. Nina M D. Beverly Hills Fusion of Science and Beauty. We'll be back next week. Another fab show ahead of us.